I'm Dan, welcome back to Trials of Fire. We're into Act 2 here, and let's get underway. So we've uh, just killed the first Act boss. We've got a bunch of loot here. Looks like a rusted helm, shrouded armor, and some food supplies. Uh, let's get our boys equipped. Uh, we're going to lose this perfect aim, which might not be great, but we're kind of going all in on this uh, summoning. Uh, in fact... Um, we also got some shrouded armor that sort of boost up all your attacks, you ignore defense, and every attack this power. Okay. This doesn't help uh, our hunter massively, but I think the skulk could do. Um, so let's give it to him. Now, can anyone else use these pieces? We've got the rusted helm, which is a taunt pulling enemies in. I think that's excellent. And then the uh, that opens up the warlord to use this. All right, so Act 2, we need to head north. We've got quite a lot of options. We're very mostly determined. Um, and we're pretty fresh. we got six food. We've got plenty in the bank. So I think it's time to take some fights if we can. Speaking of fights, we've come across a uh, small, well-spoken chard claimed to have been robbed and humiliated. She offers the party a sum of 40 obsidian if they will kill the chard and help retrieve her belongings. Uh, let's challenge the charred band. She quickly leads up a steep incline, and after a few minutes you can hear excited charred voices coming from up ahead. The charred are out of sight, down an upcoming ravine. See so the element of surprise is on your side. Alright. Ooh, a lot of charred. So charred melee warriors, if I remember correctly, let's look at their deck. Yeah, so mostly advance and defend and swipes. They also have a unknown with them, a charred mystic which we can only assume is a, is a ranged character. All right, so we got some options here. Combo strikes doesn't help. I don't think it helps our, um, our hunter very much, but we can kind of put that on our allies if we want. Uh, and in fact, let's move you forward a little bit here. Oh, thank you, <laughs> tooltips for the game. Um, you know what, let's give you some focus. And take a shot here, giving us back one willpower. And we'll move you side by side and do a... Well, you already have five armor, whatever. Uh, and hold there. So they're going to come in for this hunter. Hopefully we'll be able to retreat down a little bit before he takes any real damage. Well, any real damage that's not from a mystic. Hey, I said no damage taking. Thank you. Good news is, he is right in the thick of this and can do a bunch of damage to these guys. Um, which I think means we want to get our warrior in there. Strike through here. Dealing enough damage to both of them. Leaving him open to... Uh, Come in now. I think the uh, extra the melee attacks are going to be more valuable here on this chard. We can do a bit of the old one-two combo. Uh, probably should have cast inspired on ourselves, honestly, but that's fine. We can defend up. Just gonna kill with a blow to the head, and. Uh, yeah, you can armor up as well. We'll save our inspiration for next turn. Okay, so we can move in, defend, move in further. We can cause everyone to march, etc. Uh, I think a shield bash would be interesting, but it's only going to do one damage. But it's all we've got, really. So if we initiate a mar, let's head rush in. And march, this lets you disengage. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if that counts as if your previous card was a move card. Let's find out. Yeah, let us... Um, all of your attacks ignore... Okay, ignoring defense, which is nice, not super useful now. Um, but perhaps we can make it... No, it's not going to be able to hit you, is it? Uh, Alright, let's just take the power shot. Still got that Inspire up our sleeve, and we got Inspiring Strike this turn too, which is actually better. Okay, what have we got? So we can pull that enemy in in two spaces we can even advance to here grapple them just want to get this guy off the field if we can and inspiring strike inspiring our allies now they don't really have any attacks well this guy does uh, but let's skulk up here leaving us available to do three and then Let's take a B3 and then two, I believe. All attack damage. I can't remember if that affects combos. Um, let's just do a wild swing to be sure. And uh, end our turn. Now this guy's a little bit um, surrounded, which is not ideal. But she's got a fair amount of armor. It's not going to save her completely, but it's going to help. Uh, all right, move to gain one willpower. Next attack deals extra damage. And it's going to let us do a headshot. Which we don't necessarily... So six uh, is going to leave him with... What's he on? So he's on 13. Uh, so he's got four health, which is going to be slightly above the headshot level. So if we do a bash first... Um, possibly even Iron Taunt here. Uh, is this now going to be enough? I really didn't calculate it out. Six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. I think we're going to be better off doing a Wild Swing. Kind of wasted that uh that reel in. Hopefully we don't pay for it too much. If the warlord can stay alive, we won't get any more injuries. Uh, in fact, let's do an inspiring strike, getting this kill, letting our allies move, uh, get get more damage. Um, Inflict all anima allies, enemies with exposed. They're going to take more damage. And then do some big old hits. There we go. Nice level up. Uh, we can protect, choose a friendly ally. All damage to that character is transferred to you until the start of the next turn. Defend three, counter strike. Melee attack four, then draw a card. This card cannot be played unless you uh, have taken an attack. And also a tackle, which involves weakness. I like the tackle. Weakness is, uh, is pretty good. And uh, we can kind of replace one of our moves for that, I think. We have a fair bit of gold. Um, I don't think we're quite ready to hit a town just yet. As you enter the ruins, Jara spots some vibrant greenery growing just inside a hollow window. As she approaches, however, the bush explodes into a motion of horrible screech. Oof, what are these? Harpies. Ok, 
Okay. Um. Can pull all the news within range three. You're not within that kind of range. Um, but we can go back to back. Both gain of four armor. And then also a further bit of armor. You know what? Let's do let's throw an attack out. Cool. So we have that legendary build, uh, legendary item, which we haven't really used. Whenever you summon a character, activate it. So it lets you kind of use them the same turn as uh, as you summon them. Oof, this is not good. Our, rain, our hunter getting surrounded here. But they use up all their abilities just to, just to make that happen. Alright. So let's arm and advance. We're going to jump in the thick of things here. That'd be... I can't get in to be um, to be right in the middle of things here for a measured sorry for a wide sweep unless I can get all the way up there but that's going to hit this guy too right so let's move him down one and what would I need actually I think it's just going to be better to move here and do a measured blow, getting more armor and letting my allies <laughs> help me out with combo strikes. And in fact, finishing off a target. Now let's move you in a little bit closer to, so, anyone, so they uh, only have one avenue of attack against this hunter. Barely touching me. Alright, so let's bring out the glass wizard, shall we? And it gets to activate on its turn. You know what, you're going to have to make your way around, I guess. Um... All right, two down, one to go. In fact, let's move you in here. This creature's surrounded. It can fly, so I've got to get out of the uh, get out of there. But it won't have many cards to do so. I don't think. So what do we got? Sparring strike, giving bonuses to our allies. And a confidence strike. Woof! From all that inspiration. So, a pretty easy fight in the end. Uh, we get another spirit fetish. It's not as good as the legendary one we have, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay. Let's see if we have any other cool stuff. We can now get a dire bat. Um, it doesn't perform combo strikes, but it does inflict exposed. Uh, and so, let's uh, replace our regular strikes with that. We're making this sort of beast master hunter. Um, do we need to rest? We have seven everything, so. Uh, I can, we can see ourselves using a little bit of that. Hopefully we'll be able to walk through uh, these cliffs somewhere. You come across a small vault in a vile looking temple with a bizarre looking antechamber. Jarrah inspects the inscriptions here and it seems that a human sacrifice is required in this chamber if you're to venture deeper into the vault. Uh, we'll lose follower, epic reward, food. Um, sorry Adam, sorry Adam the blacksmith. Kachunk. Um, we just sacrificed him but we got a poison spear and um... I feel like we'll remember him forever. In fact, the mountain's ranges of ash can impede your travel, but if you look carefully, you may be able to spot entrances to ash's underways. 
Look out for these by looking for the telltale signs of fog and water leaking out onto the glasslands. So out over here, I guess, is what you're talking about. All right, let's continue on our way. So our uh, upgrades are a little bit more expensive now because we murdered Adam, but we do have a sweet spear. Um, a band of rattling slavers emerge from a nearby tunnel. They move to quickly surround you. All right, rattling slavers. Uh, again, let's go back to back. Can you... You're, not gonna, you're in a good spot there. You don't need to really move. And you can defensive stance and... Move two, defend five, gain one willpower. Okay. And... Boom. Uh, you know what, let's keep the headshot and everyone can keep the rest of their abilities. We have uh, two summons, they are a bit expensive. Our warrior's been pulled into melee range, which is not great, but they're in a little bit of a kind of a choke point. We have to get our, uh, oof, glad we took all that armor. Wide sweep, though, is going to be interesting. So let's armored advance here, shall we? Armored advance. Iron strike. Uh, inspiring strike gives uh, gives that inspiration. Another inspiring strike. Uh, Makes it last two rounds. Wild Sweep is going to hit both these targets, which I do love. Um, let's move the bat in, though, to attack. I just realized my Wild Sweep might hit that guy now. Which is not ideal. Um... But, you know, go see what it's like. Oh no, only hits enemies. Good, 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 good. And headshot can hit this guy and I think finish him off. Boom. That's two down already. We've blown away half the field in just, I think, two turns. And this guy wants to be surrounded. By me and my bats. Uh, so both these guys get exposed by the bat, which is nice. Um, what do you have here? Lunge. Move two to target melee attack six. Each time you play a card, increase movement by one. Okay. We don't really need that, do we? Let's be selfless, give everyone some more cards, that doesn't matter. This probably will though. Alright, let's confident strike. Melee attack five, six, because of uh, exposed, and plus we get some sweet combo strikes. Combo strikes doing more because of that exposed as well. So the downside of the bat not being able to combo strike uh, it does make things easier for your allies. And we can head rush in onto this guy. Moving so he's difficult for him to escape. That won't matter. He's just going to die. That random extra shot thanks to that power. Um, all right, lead by example, grant inspired to all other friendly characters. So that's a better inspiration plus defense, etc. 
All friendly characters in three spaces get plus one to attack damage. Encourage is pretty cool, especially if we're summoning a lot. Um, but let's try lead by example. Started to move this way, and then the auto pathing's taking me here. Uh, all right, local arcanist bemoans the lack of need for his skills in such a backwater, calling the humans backward and savage. He offers to sell his services and accompany the party on their journey. Let's hire him. We have a lot of food, though, actually. Yeah, sure. Give him two supplies for his family. The arcanist quickly sets off to give his fee to another male, rattling before exchanging an emotional goodbye. We got Fenril, the arcanist. Upgrade common and rare staves. Uh, tomes and totems at reduced cost. Okay. I mean, that's nice. Um, we don't have a ton of those with our party makeup, and we're actually almost at the next boss, and I feel like we've got a lot more we can do, so I'd like to hit a couple of these ruins before we before we hit there. Bit of a risk, as we could take too much damage and, and kind of hit a, a death spiral, but look, you got to be in it for the biscuit. You hear sounds of labor coming from the ruins, and soon come across a group of hybrid toiling to repair a section of the of the structure. Jara is greeted by a friendly band of mercenaries descended from the hybrid who called this home before the cataclysm. Agree to spend a day training, or you cannot spare the time to continue on your journey. Look, let's level up. Uh, okay. Challenging stride is good, moving them and pulling them into us. Uh, but I want to level up these uh, these measured blows. Because so we need her to be hitting more often, triggering those combo strikes, not necessarily doing uh, huge big swings, I think. In the ruins of what appears to be a human town, you come across a group of humans who have captured a single rattling. Upon noticing the party, the captive calls out desperately... Do we have a battle and a side quest, or leave the trader to his fate and explore the ruins? Look, I'm up for a side quest. Bandit robbers and a bandit archer. Okay. All right. Defend three grand inspired to all friendly characters. It's going to be good, but maybe not necessarily this turn, right? Let's get you behind cover. Grab volley fire. And some adrenaline on you. Cool. I mean, most of these guys are melee, so they gotta, they got to rush in. This archer could be a bit of a problem, but is going for the hunter, which is going to draw her in, I guess. Draw him in. It's hard to tell. All right, another good wild sweep target if I can get it. Or we could pull a target in. Stalk, your combo strikes deal plus two damage if you're not adjacent. That's probably not going to happen. All your attacks ignore defense. And... Look, let's get you in here. Can we make some power? Yes, we can. Five on all adjacent enemies. Great. And taunt them into the thick of it. Um, I don't really care about that. Move one to target melee attack five. Let's get him in here. There's the risk. We've run the risk of uh, someone coming up and hitting him, but uh, they can't really get around him or surround him now. And the this guy is going to be kind of stuck. I have to move out through the allies. Not 
Not bad, not bad. Alright, we can line up here to get back out. And... I'd like to summon my Glass Lizard. Which lets me attack straight away. Uh, all friendly heroes draw a card. That's pretty cool. Inspiring Strike. No, you're not going to get a chance to use that. Uh, now, do we headshot, which does three damage? Uh, I think might be enough here if we, yeah, if we do three, and then the headshot finishes them off, leaving us with another summon ready to go. So it's like the Hot Gates, Battle of Thermopylae or whatever. Okay, Hunters, uh, the Archer, sorry, is uh, is retreating to get some ranged attacks up. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of um, armor, but I can get it. By moving here, going back to back, I give everyone a lot of armor. That lets me do a measured blow. And then a shield bash for seven. Okay, quick shot, range attack three. Or improvised attack, range attack three. <laughs> Either or. Or I can summon a mad soul. It also does three damage. Let's do that. That's going to be better long term, I think. So let's move you in, defending a bunch as you go. And all enemies within range two. Are inflicted with exposed. Let's move you into range. Combo striking all the while. And make a power shot here. a lot of damage we're just seeing out in fact we can finish him off giving my allies a little bit of armor thanks to that warrior ability too here we go in sight uh, to all friendly summons inspiring them and activating them so we can get in attack attack didn't need it in the end but the potential power is there uh, ooh, another shield this time a kite shield uh, which is obviously quite powerful being a purple item. And we have more options for summons. Uh, the Dire Bat, again, we've seen that before. This time a Bone Wolf. Bone Wolf can perform combo strikes in response to ranged attacks, which I like the idea of. Now, Focus, we haven't really been using a lot of, uh, so I'm willing to drop that for more summons here. And let's give you the Shield. And with the bandit defeated, the rattling trader would like uh, to be escorted back to town. Where are you going? Oh, it's over here. Sounds easy enough. No major upgrades. We are exhausted though, which is a bit of a worry. Um, we don't really need the healing. Hopefully we'll be able to rest in this town. It's uh, a strange bluish fire erupts from the ground here. Shanna identifies this phenomenon as a soul fire, and it's possible your soul scarred group will be able to absorb the experience of some of the obliterate of some of those obliterated by the cataclysm by entering the fire. Let's walk through fire to take some damage. Five damage, five, three, and three. 
uh, but it gives us level ups. Um, weaken two on a lot of enemies, I think, is going to be better. Um, yeah, if that's our intent, let's do it and make it last a couple of turns. Rattling takes the party to an affluent area near the center of the settlement and soon finds this old business, a large trading post in a building that used to be a warehouse. Side quest completed, level up. Um, back to back was pretty cool. Bring that up to six might be worthwhile. Uh, Inspiring Strike has been working out pretty well for me too though. So let's just buff that a little bit. And we get a bag full of obsidian. Okay. So we find ourselves in town with some stuff we can buy. Perhaps some materials. No. Nothing super cool here. Let's just sell uh, all this stuff. All right. So we're exhausted. Let us... Uh, we don't have anything to upgrade. We're just going to rest. And rest again. And we're fresh, ready to hit the Act 2 boss. The ruin ahead must be the one mentioned in Naya's writings. You are getting close. As you enter the destroyed town, strange, bluish wisps dart among the streets. And Shanna can't help but stop and admire the beauty of the spectacle. Her awe is short-lived, though, as the wisps start to congregate to a single point picking up skeletal remains and more recently deceased bodies as they go. Before long, a huge, vaguely humanoid shape stands to challenge you made up of the bones of the Fallen. Alright, so we're up against the Amalgam. Fragmented Soul. For every 8 points of damage the Amalgam takes, spawn a husk nearby. Okay. What are we going to do? Let us advance. We'll give you some leadership. You can be selfless, which lets people draw cards. Let's you draw cards. Uh, let's give you some powers. And oop. you can summon your mad soul. And we'll buff you up. Alright. Not a bad opening turn. Oh, they've put they've made our uh, our guy defenseless, which is not ideal. Um ooh, corrosive edge. Melee attack five, inflict acid, and then inflict acid again. Um that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get close enough to make it worthwhile, though. Let's pull you in a defensive stance, and... Can we taunt? Yeah. In fact, go on further and reel you in, so that we're surrounding you. And... Can we, what, what's our best course of action here? We do a couple of swipes. Obviously it's going to trigger a husk being spawned. I like the idea of grant, lead by example. Defend three, grant inspired to all other friendly characters. Oh, you can't. That's right, you can't defend. That's annoying. Um... I can get you one, two. I can't get you into melee range. That's fine. Let's just do a strike through here. Husk spawns uh, in the middle here. But we can move over here uh, with our tackle, causing enemies to be weakened. And do some shield bashes. Um, 
that's gonna get the kill. That's right, you can do combo attacks. Good on you. So ideally we want to uh, either do enough damage so that, because um, I think you can only do Fragment Soul once per turn. Um, so if you summon a husk, you want to kill the husk if you can and then and then wipe out everyone else as well, right? Um, whoa, he just made me discard my entire hand. What was that? Horror. Push three on an adjacent enemy. Target discards one card for each space moved. Jesus. Uh, well. We have some options here for attacks. Um, in fact, let's summon the... Let's summon the Bone Wolf, because he gets those bonuses on... Um, combo attacks and we will now defend and grant inspired which does buff all our allies, allies and all our ally pets etc husk does get spawned but we're not too worried about that I hope um, our warlord is surrounded which is not ideal but we have some minions of our own here In fact, Inspiring Strike, I think, is definitely going to help us. Um, so what are our options? You are well out of the fight here, which is not ideal. I think we're going to just summon more stuff. So let's... Um, inspiring Strike. Boosting our allies here. Uh, inspiring strike killing the husk boosting the so they still got this plus two let's summon the glass lizard move you into melee range and just surround this creature so everyone's doing two damage even on the combo strikes thanks to the inspiration another husk does spawn but we can surround it and kill it. Interesting. Okay, um, pretty happy with that. The grapple does make the can make the target defenseless. We'll hold that just in case. Okay, we lost uh, lost our little dude there, but that's okay. We are about to get in sight, which is going to grant inspired to all these guys and activate them. Um, so this is exciting. Protect it too. Don't worry about that. Where are you going to go? Yeah, why don't you move up here so you're around everybody. Uh, let us grant inspired to friendly summons and activate them. Moving you in. Yeah, let's move you in here. And there's just whale on this bone amalgam. Okay, a bunch of defense. More inspired strikes. That's it. Act two done. I'm quite liking the summoning uh, hunter ability. Uh, we've got a couple of options here. Dragon wing braces. Giving us fly, force field on all friendly characters. That could be quite good for our warlord as they'll, um, you know, by force fielding, defending two on all friendly characters activates their uh, their nonsense and it seems to be the biggest upgrade I think we can have right now too so let's do that and see what else we can get on the hunter we can get, like, get another glass with glass lizard um, I'm somewhat hesitant to go to have too many summon skills in his deck straight away 
um, being low level and so on. Um, you know, the improvised attacks can still be useful in other ways, etc. Um, so let's uh, let's upgrade his existing summons to have a little bit more health here, right? These measured blows are doing well. Choose a friendly character. All damage is sent to you. Um, I like that. I also like the resilience power just gaining defense every turn. Um, and let's upgrade that back to back because we seem to be using it a lot. Uh, and let's just equip these... With these items shall we well, bash or call lightning call lightning seems pretty cool bash was nice i don't think we use it too much it does make a lot of her spells i think pretty expensive um so we'll see how that goes maybe we'll change that back okay it appears naya has been here raston points out some writing carved into a stone slab by the point of a weapon the writing is a message to any voiders following that it, uh, following and describes where Naya has gone next. Leaving a trail like this is a dangerous gamble, but as you have little else to go on, the party decides to follow the clues to your next destination. And that next destination will be in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Maybe tell someone about the video if you find this, uh, this game really interesting. And if you're enjoying the Trolls of Fire stuff, please leave a comment below telling me so. Um, in fact, telling me your favorite class because we have a class guide on the website and I'd love you to check it out and I want to put more work into it as I get better at this game and you're watching that journey uh, of, of us playing this game here. So I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.